Hi everyone, welcome back to The Politics Show. I'm Councillor Perimir with co-host Councillor Andrew Wood. So in this section, we're going to talk about the referendum. Now, some of you guys might be oblivious to it. You don't even know it's happening. Some people be inundated with videos, posters, Facebook messages being tagged. I myself have been tagged on various messages. I don't even know <laughs> who's tagging me. Um, uh, and I just recently just came in through my uh, came into my house and saw a poster as well with the great and the good uh, on on one of the posters. I, I, some of the people I didn't know were still with us, but apparently they are kind of ish. So Andrew, what's your take on it? It seems like a very colourful kind of. Uh, <laughs> campaign um, i mean it's good in one respect so hopefully it will boost turnout because i was expecting next thursday not to have particularly high turnout because i think most people expect sadiq khan to get re-elected as mayor of london and that doesn't really help with turnout so this might might have an impact which would be positive because normally turnout in these okay. elections is a bit low um and yeah i've also seen on social media a lot i've also seen some of the leaflets from from both sides as well that have been distributed and i know there are teams out this weekend from from both sides and it's quite funny so for me because i actually i still haven't decided which way i'm going to vote i still i'm still you know debating within myself as to which one is the right option and, and i have issues with both of them so i find it quite interesting finding all of these people who are absolutely certain that you know leader is the right solution or mayor is the right solution um and you know therefore you need to vote for that one because i'm i'm not so clear myself yet yeah, it, it seems like a very um, weird, weird campaign in the sense that um, well, I was I was actually watching some of the debates, and the debates are more about p past issues. Um, mm -hmm. This is what's happened in the past, and then blaming certain things on a particular system, sort of ish, or giving credit to a particular system. Which for me, like it just. Well, being a counsellor, you, you just realise what act, what the actual reality is. Um, but you see, and it's very, it was very personality based as well. Um, it, so it seemed like a throwback to how Tahamas politics used to be. Like, did, did, someone told me there's people from Scotland campaigning <laughs> for on on this issue for Tower Hamlet. So it's kind of like getting a lot of um, outside attention as well what's what's your prediction just talking to people i i find it quite interesting in the sense that a lot of people didn't make their mind up at the beginning they were sort of like listening to the arguments etc etc um but for, for me it, it seems it seems like um so sort of like the people i and like it could be a biased sample people i i talk to are not convinced with the leading cabinet kind of ish. They're still Uri and I, but they're not actually convinced that it is a it is a panacea for all our problems, so to speak. What's what's your impression just talking to people out there? Um so I guess a couple of points. I mean, you know, as a reminder, back in May 2010, we had exactly the same referendum choice. And there must have been a reason why 60% of people then voted to try something new, the mayoral system. So that suggests they weren't particularly happy with the leader and cabinet as it then worked. I think that's one issue. Second issue is, you know, unfortunately, sort of look for Rahman and whether you you know love him or hate him is clearly driving some of some or even many people's votes. And I think that is unfortunate because one of the things I've tried to point out is we can't change this decision for another 10 years. So that's three election cycles, 2022, 2026, and 2030. And and entirely well you never know who knows that you know john biggs and look for rama may not be around for for two of those three elections and i think that's part of the difficulty is trying to work out how this could be used because in reality you know all systems can fail or succeed depending if they have the right people or not i think i've pointed out before that you know croydon failed but that had a leader and liverpool failed and that had a mayor so there's there's no uh, there's no direct link between whether one system is better or not but, you know, to be honest, you know, in many respects, uh, because I believe in democracy, I'm probably closer to the mayoral system than I am to the leader system, because I think it's a better system of voting. It's more like proportional representation and councillors, which is first past the post. 
But I also know the mayor has too much power as well. Um, and that's not a perfect system. And therefore, the leader system, it means there's at least some control if you, if, you know, voters make the wrong decision and elect the wrong person. So, Moving on to that, is, is just, just see, are there any way of us constitutionally binding the powers of the mayor, sort of ish, if we end up with that, creating a hybrid system? Andrew, just, just so putting it out there. Jeez. So, legally, I'm not sure we can. What, but what we could do, and, and oddly, oddly enough, I think about Hong Kong a lot. Of, you know, before Britain handed Hong Kong over to China, we should have done more to embed within Hong Kong democracy before we handed it back to China. And therefore, there's an argument that if the mayoral system wins, and and therefore people might fear look for Ram and return in in you know 12 months time. That perhaps what we might want to do over the next 12 months is, is kind of bed in some big changes to how the council operates. That doesn't stop, you know, a future mayor perhaps look for himself from reversing some of that stuff. But it would be much harder to do reversing something than taking over the existing system, which is still, you know, pretty much uh, gives, you know, has the, where the mayor has all of the power and where scrutiny is not particularly strong. Yeah. And, and there's various things that, that we could do. We could change the, the Tower Hamlets Council constitution. Um, so again, that would make it more difficult for a future mayor to overturn some of these things. Or if he did it, it would, it would be like obvious that they were doing this. Whereas right now, a lot of these things are kind of hidden. So I think that may be what we would need to do if, if the mayoral system wins a re referendum is look at those changes over the next 12 months. No, no, def definitely, definitely. It, it, it is kind of a interesting um it, it has so sort of like um i think one positive thing that i've seen is people are much more politicized people are talking about politics people are talking about how the borough should be run people are quite divided people in the same household i've seen so sort of like have discussions so it is it is it has sort of like generated interest as to how this borough should be run what are the issues etc so it's, it's about engaging with with that um, and channeling it towards a positive politics rather than a destructive one, um, uh, which which can can happen. Um, any any sort of like um, final thoughts, uh, Andrew? What's what's your prediction, sort of ish? Just uh, um, just talking to people because obviously people be much more open to. I find people are much more open to me because they know that I'm I'm not on either cap yeah. sort of strongly so they they have much more honest conversation what's what's the feedback you're getting from people what's what do you think the results are going to be if you want to give a prediction i think it depends on who you're speaking to um so and i think it's also within communities you know there are differences and again that comes back to how look for ramen was perceived as well i mean the one thing i am concerned about is is some of the messaging about the leader system I'm not sure is entirely correct because even today I've just met two people and talked to them and they both talked about the cabinet system and I didn't really have time just to say to them I actually know it's it's a leader system and the leader basically has you know a lot of power close to to what the mayor has but not quite yeah. as much and it's up to the leader to decide how they want the cabinet to work I think and that's the other part of the problem is actually a lot of this detail hasn't been sorted out because we kind of rushed into this so I, I still have a lot of questions about how this would actually work in practice but my understanding is is that the leader has the power and can choose to delegate but that's true of the mayor i mean the mayor john biggs you know a couple of months ago decided to switch from you know cabinet members just sort of you know sort of only having a say to actually we're now in cabinet it's a vote so they vote on things um so far every cabinet member has voted the same way as the mayor but in principle um, cabinet members can can vote differently from the mayor and, and therefore overturn his decision. And, and that's a new thing that Mayor John Biggs introduced a couple of months yeah. ago. Um, that was his choice. Well, my 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 prediction is um, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb. It's really close. Um, mm -hmm. That that that's what it is. It seems like really close. Um, when someone did ask me, I said, "Ask me two weeks away from the actual election." Um, and even then, it's it's kind of like that. It's kind of like a 
it, it's choppy waters. That's what. That's the only thing I could say. It's not like a. So it's very difficult, and it, it, a lot of things depend on the day. It's 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 a bit like Brexit. That's that's what it reminds me of. And it is as if as Brexit. Yeah, it will depend on turnout, as I said, and, and who turns out uh, and who will win. I'll, I'll do, a, I think, a poll on Facebook this this weekend just to kind of see what people are kind of thinking. Um, but yeah, but I think it is the most interesting of the elections because it's the one where the results are, you know, most uncertain. So it will be generally yeah. interesting. And accounting won't happen until Saturday. So we won't know the results uh, that night or the next day. It will be Saturday at least. Um, maybe Sunday before we actually know the results of this. Cool. So, uh, so, so yeah, so next, it's after, after this weekend, next weekend, we'll know the result and we'll know which way Tower Hamlets is going to be governed uh, and the future direction of politics, or at least a general direction of the politics, not the future. But um, we're going to go into a break now. After the break, we're going to talk about the knife crime uh, epidemic that's uh, hitting london in general but hitting east london as well i know you, you might have heard of the fatalities on the isle of dogs the attacks knife attacks there's been canning town as well just down the road uh but just generally um it seems to be on the rise so join us after the break where we talk about the knife crime epidemic affecting our communities and possible solutions so we're going to go straight to a break <laughs> 